the secret. talking to you from Helsinki, the capital city of Finland. After all this situation I went through in Ireland all around Europe past 24 years, I decided to do something uh, I think nobody did it up till now, uh, undercover as a refugee. Uh, after I read about every country and I visit every country in Europe uh, how they treat in the refugee and uh, to find which country is better uh, treating the people as a refugee uh, in human rights in any position connected to human being. Uh, what is the best country uh, now, uh, what in 2015, uh, Finland? And we decide, uh, me and my fiance, to go undercover as a refugee to visit Finland, to be a refugee inside Finland, and to see what kind of treatment the refugee get and how the system works in this country. Step with us and see how the system works.
building behind me. This is where I claim refugee status to enter the life of refugee here in Helsinki. And uh, up till now, we're sitting in refugee camp. Uh, this is what it looks like. Uh, you go inside, you go to see the, the refugee, what look looks like uh, inside this camp. Uh, we taped in a secret camera from uh, outside to inside uh, to show the world. Not the reason I want any residence anymore, anywhere. But to show the world what they claim and they have human rights and they come in under this propaganda name to our countries, invade our countries, damage our nation, damage our history, and after that, uh, they don't have even the human rights their own country. Uh, here, the hypocrite of the West, and especially America, what they did to our countries all around the world, uh, they say, if we fight all the dictators, we got to install democracy and human rights. You can't install democracy. Democracy is a name like a chingo. You can squeeze it or you can make it longer how you want. Everyone, he uh, talking about democracy, he, he don't understand what means democracy. You know, he don't understand what means the freedom of speech past 24 years I'm living in a country what called democratic country but I didn't see it how can a person live 24 years in a country is called democratic and he's still stateless because American power over everybody Here in Helsinki, outside the Iraqi embassy. You can see behind me the Iraqi embassy, what known in Saddam time, one of the beautiful best embassy here in Helsinki. Today has been torn to one of the biggest uh, secret militias running all Scandinavia. And the ambassador, he belonged to one of the head of militias in Baghdad. He, hire, uh, he carry in two passports, one from Poland and the second one is British passport. And this man, he working with a, a Badr Brigade, what one of the biggest murder militia in Iraq. And uh, this ambassador, he keep uh, this embassy under the diplomatic way to cover all the money laundering and all the uh, people what they claim a refugee uh, here in Finland 
uh, half of them they work in the embassy in a black market what this is what I can't understand how somebody claiming he's afraid of Iraq and the militias and he will and when he get in the refugee status he start working for the Iraqi embassy I'm asking all these uh, foolish countries what called the Western to look at this situation how is work in their country if they are not full, this is mean they cooperate with the mortar and the militias around the world. Uh, this is the Iraqi embassy. Uh, through this embassy, billions of dollars has been ma uh, laundering through Scandinavia up till down to Italy. Uh, from now on, on, I go to go around the world uh, with my camera, with the help of the fantastic team I have to show the world what's going on behind their back and how the, their government deal with the situation of Iraq and Middle East under the cover and they under the name of democracy and human rights. And when the really somebody comes to them with a true story and he's been threat, they refuse his refugee, they refuse his residence and they keep giving all the militias and the murder status and citizenship. This is the hypocrite of the West. Alaikum <laughs> salam. عراقي اهلا وسهلا فيك ايه بس وصلنا خبر انه حضرتك بتصور العشر اي ليش السفارة شبيه حتى ما خايفين من عدم مو هذا الحكي تدري احنا هسه بوضع يعني شنو الوضع اردفته هنا يعني عندنا وضع معين بالعراق شيء يعني مهن هالقبيل شنو يعني غير تشرح لي الوضع حتى افتهم انا يعني ما افتهم ارد تشرح لي الوضع حتى يعني نطرحه يجوز للراي العام حتى يجوز نساعدكم بالعراق اذا نقدر زي حضرتك من وين؟ عراقي على عيني وراسي شايل كاميرا هم على عيني وراسي بس شنو المناسبة اللي تصور بها؟ والله عندنا فيلم وثائق عن العراق ودا نسويه زين ليش ما تقدم طلب وتجي وت... احنا نساعدك بعد لا تسلم لي احنا مو يعني نساعدك بعد بس ندعمك مثلا تريد تريد مقاطع تريد صور تريد شيء ندعمك عندنا عندنا ارشيف كامل ارشيف كامل عندنا صار لنا ثلاث سنوات نشتغل فاذا نسوي سفارات العراقيه برا ونسوي العراقيين برا ونسوي كل الشغلات برا اذا عندكم شيء تريدون تزودونه بيه زودونه اذا ما عندكم شيء احنا بدنا نصور باب السفاره مفتوح لك وكل الهلا بيك وتعال وتفضل ونقعد ونسولف ونحكي ونقول يا باني من فلان جهه معينه لا انا ما امثل لا جهه ولا ابد انا امثل العراقيين والعراق برا وهذا هو انا لا تابع الجهه ولا اشتغل الجهه وكل واحد يشتغل اللي يريده مو احنا بلد ديمقراطي سوي العراق على عيني وراسي مو عندنا ديمقراطيه على عيني وراسي صح لو لا زين بعد منو جنابك؟ اني؟ لطيف يحيى اني دق عندك الجرس؟ حبيبي الف هلا بيك الف لا قل اني اني لطيف يحيى اللي تسمونه ابو المصايب مو؟ لا انت تصور ولا لا لا اسمه ما في شيء بعد فوصلنا لكم الفنلندا شلونك؟ الحمد لله انت اخبارك؟ تمام Thank God they don't, they don't recognize you. Hello, my name is Stephen Donovan. I am originally American, but I left the United States many years ago. I have a story. I now live in Ukraine, which is the subject of a lot of people's attention. And the reality is, is that you can find a very different understanding about what's going on in Ukraine than what people commonly understand from listening to the mainstream media. People need to understand that historically Ukraine has been very much a central part of 
the Russian people's identity. So, for example, the original Rus people were in Ukraine. So, in a sense, part of Ukraine is more Russian than even Russia is. And in half of the country, the, na the people's native language is Russian. They identify themselves as Russian, even though they have Ukrainian citizenship. But in the Western media, you have a lot of propaganda talking about how Russia is invading Ukraine and such like this, which is factually untrue. So people, for example, think that Russia invaded Crimea. Well, what happened was, was that the United States and Europe organized essentially a de facto coup d'etat, removing the elected president and installing another president. The people of Crimea said, we don't want to be a part of this. We're going to have a referendum. We're going to get out of this. And because we identify ourselves as Russian, we want to be a part of Russia. So they had a referendum. The people overwhelmingly voted to leave Ukraine and be a part of Russia. And because Crimea is essentially an island, it is like a little diamond with only a little bit connected to Ukraine, where they already had a Russian base, the Russia could defend them. And, and Ukraine couldn't do anything about it. The Western media reported that this was an invasion. It's not an invasion. The people in Crimea right now are very happy. What happened was that in other regions that were Russian regions like Donetsk, Lugansk, and Kharkov, they said, we're going to have a referendum too because we don't want to be a part of this either. Vladimir Putin is getting a lot of attention as being the evil invader of Russia. But in fact, I mean, of Ukraine. But in fact, he told those regions, do not have a referendum. Why? Because we, Russia, cannot help you. But the leaders of Donetsk and Lugansk said, we're going to have the referendum anyway. So the leaders of Kharkov, which is also a Russian city, said, okay, we're not going to have the referendum. So what happened? In Lugansk and Donetsk, they had the referendum. They voted to be a part of Russia. Russia then said, no, we're not going to have you because we can't help you. So they said, we're going to name ourselves Novi Russia, New Russia. So the West, talking about democracy and human rights and freedom, didn't respect that referendum and thus, with their newly installed puppet, started waging war on the people of Donetsk and Lugansk. And they are killing civilians, they are killing everybody because all of those people collectively rejected Ukraine. And so it is a completely backward story that we get, and it's a, it's a very sad story because historically there was no distinction, but no significant distinction between Ukrainians and Russians, just like in other places, maybe Iraq. No significant distinction between Shiites and Sunnis, but people create these distinctions in order to get the people to kill each other for other people's interests. And it's a very sad story. As American, I am from Iraq. Uh -huh. What do you think the foreign policy in America, that they did a great job or a bad job in Iraq to invade it? Well, I am fundamentally an anti-imperialist. I fundamentally don't think that... I mean, when you talk about Iraq, people don't understand that Saddam Hussein was originally a CIA assassin. He was repeatedly involved in many American-assisted coup d'etats, was even thrown in jail, and the Americans helped break him out of jail, bring him to Egypt in order to bring him back, in order to usurp his uncle. Immediately after, I mean, he was an American asset. He was an American asset, so when they had the 79 revolution in Iran, it was Saddam Hussein who they called upon to attack Iran. So, the United States is not motivated by concern for the Iraqi people. The United States is not motivated for the concern for the Ukrainian people. The United States is not motivated for concern about the Syrian people. The United States is not motivated for concern about the Palestinian people. The United States is not concerned about the welfare of the American people. The United States is concerned about a very small interest of people who make a lot of money from oil and war. And so, the, the, in, the invasion of Iraq has destroyed Iraq. Um, they create these proxy armies like this ISIS, which is a fabrication 
of people that they blame as Muslim extremists because the president didn't sign a, a status of forces agreement that could allow American soldiers to remain in Iraq. He wanted them to get out. So they create a new boogeyman so that, oh, now they're going to help Iraq fight ISIS. And what do what they do? They blow up the treasured area of, of Nimrod, Nimrud, which is one of the most rich archaeological treasures in the world that preserves the Mesopotamian tradition. This is not the work of Muslim extremists. And so they destroy places. They don't help places, they destroy places. What would be best for the Iraqis? To, to be under the control and rule of Iraqis. But this is not going to happen. What would be the best for Ukraine? Would be to not have NATO, the United States, involved in Ukraine. But because these people have such tight control of the media, because they get to tell their stories, and people do not get to tell stories back, it's not a discussion, it's not a debate, it's indoctrination. It's, I'll tell you a story, and you believe it, and because it's in the New York Times, because it's in Le Monde, because it's on BBC, you will feel yourself educated by repeating that story, irregardless of the fact that it's just not true. And you will have no way of knowing that it's not true, because most people are not very well traveled, and do not know much about other places in the world, they have never been there. Um, I'm so proud of you as American. I hope all the Americans be open-minded and well-spoken like you. And I'm proud to have you as friend for life. Thank you very much. Thank but you so much. The problem is, is that I left the United States 12 years ago because they were bombing Iraq. You are and so I good. <laughs> I wish every American listen to your message and be proud of you as an American speak loud. Thank you very much. Thank I you wish, so much. I wish there be peace on earth in Iraq, in, in Palestine, in Ukraine, in Libya, in Iran, in Syria, in Egypt, and other places as well. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. After we explain to the uh, Finnish uh, police uh, our situation in Ireland, uh, they decide to refuse our application as asylum seeker. Uh, and the, uh, the reason was we come in from a European country. And they didn't look at the application why we claim this refugee status. Uh, they told uh, my fiance, you have two choices to send it to Britain or Ireland. And they told me, because you are a resident of Ireland, you can go back to Ireland. Uh, this means deportation, it's not uh, voluntary uh, deportation. Uh, I told them I'm refusing going back to Ireland. They say to me, we go to send you back to Iraq, where your country. And I told them, uh, I don't have any uh, things to do with Iraq anymore. Past 24 years I left the, left the country. They said to me, no, you send, I send you back to Iraq. And uh, I told the police officer, yes, if you send me back to Iraq, I make sure you come with me. And uh, to be killed with me, because they send me to the death penalty. Here we are uh, stuck. Stuck why? Because they took my travel document and my fiance passport. But, we got to do something else, we got to smuggle ourselves again and hit the road in a different way and again I start as I was doing past 24 years, smuggling myself from country to country. And, when this video be uploaded online, may, uh, we make sure uh, we are out of this country. This is the de democracy. This is the human rights, and this is what the country is uh, talking about. And I hope, don't feel sorry for me, or uh, feel, feel sympathy for me. I'm showing you here, your countries, what claiming they have human rights. Or, please, we asking you, as a human being, to tell your government to leave us alone, and doesn't come involved in our life, in our countries. 
to we don't be in your country as a refugee and treated like a slave to be slave for the system. Before you be a Muslim or Christian or Hindu or Buddha, be a human. Have a good day.